Hey everybody, welcome to my new video and this is gonna be another how-to installation video but today I'm not on a Linux machine, I'm actually on Windows but it's only in a virtual machine so I just created a small virtual machine with basic necessities like 4, gig, uh, four cores, 8 gigabytes of RAM and I just ran the installation yesterday and the only thing I did was ran Windows the Bloat utility to, uh, to debloat all the start menu and other applications and change the dark theme and I only installed the spice drivers for the virtual machine and in this video I want to show you how on a blank computer you can install all the utilities to compile, uh, develop and also flash the images for the Astin32 and for that I'm using my Astin32 CMake repository which I'm constantly updating in order to be as uh, easy to use as possible and with as many uh, uh, options and guides on the readme and currently I'm still working on that but in this video I'm gonna install all the necessary utilities to download this repository, uh, compile it and then flash onto a board. I'm not gonna go through all the steps installation wise but I'm just gonna stop the video on those important ticks and options that you need to use on the installer in order to have all the tools working. So I'm just gonna need git so I'm gonna download it from the official website. I'm gonna need the mingw which is the utility for downloading a lot of the new collection tools uh, including make so this is gonna be my source for make. But if you want to use something else for compiling your programs, then you're going to download and look at that yourself. I'm just going to select the 64 bit for the git. Then we're going to need the CMake and download the latest one over here. And also the ARM embedded toolchain. So just go onto this download link, which is going to be provided in the description and scroll down to the latest version, which is currently 10.3.1, I think. But uh, the latest on the Linux side is already 11, but this should be plenty new and uh, quite compatible with the latest C20 as well. As you see, I'm not really concerned with where these devices and these drivers are uh, installed at. All I'm currently uh, paying attention to is to add all of these executables to the system path. So as you can see, quite of them have completed, the git is finished, so we can uh, close that. But the, uh, the embedded toolchain is also given an, an option to add the path to environment variable. So this is saying it's going to add the bin directory of all of the executables to the system path variable. If you don't know what the system path is, it's basically the same on uh, Linux. So let's just size up the font. So if you type in path on Windows, it will give you the value of the path variable, which holds all of these folders with a uh, uh, so semicolon separation. So Windows, Windows system, program files, Git. So as you can see, the Git has already placed its uh, variable over here. And this is saying that any shell environment is going to look into these folders when you ask it to execute a command. So if you type in echo, it's going to search into these folders from left to right and find the first one that matches for this command. And it's same on Linux. So if I open a terminal on my computer and I type in uh, echo path, this is all the directories that are on my system because I have NixOS, it's a little bit convoluted, but basically in all of these folders, it's going to search for executables to run them. So if I type in which which bash, for example, it says that this is where it found it. That's because the run current system server bin is one of the folders in the path. So you want to make sure to have all your programs that you want to launch, just like echo over here, you're going to have them in the path, which is not necessarily what you always want, especially if you're using multiple versions of the same tool, then you might want to not get them into the path and, uh, uh, especially explicitly uh, reference them by their absolute path but for running just one single compiler and one single build system on your computer this is fine so we're gonna ask the GCC embedder to add itself to the environmental variable let's click finish then cl close all the readmes and also the same with the CMake uh, for this instance I want just to add it for all users 
MinGW is finished installing. So if we click continue, it's going to launch the package manager or so. So everything we just need is the base one. So we're going to mark that for installation. As we can see, it has the MinGW32 make. So this is what we actually want. So click installation, apply changes and apply. And it is all downloaded. While it's downloading, I just want to go over the flashing utilities you have. Besides the STN32 Cube programmer, uh, which is the default one if you want to go at the easiest. So you can just download the software, you just have to log in first, and it will just connect to your device and flash a binary package onto it. So this is the most simple version. And of course, if you're using the Cube IDE, then all of the steps uh, until now are just uh, redundant, except for maybe Git. Also, another one is the open source alternative called the ST-Link, which is for all platforms. And if you want a ready-made platform, you don't need to compile it yourself. You just click on the release. Currently, it's the version 1.7. And just scroll down and you have all the pre-built binaries over here. So this one is for Windows. And the last one, which is the one that I'm currently going to install because I have an ST-Link reflashed uh, debugger. So that's why I need the JLink software pack. And for Windows, it comes with a handy executable. So you just download that in order to flash your boards. I already know that the Sager installation doesn't put its uh, install path into the path variable. So I'm just going to copy its path over here. This is where all the binaries are going to be located. So let's just click install. And the MinGW is finished, so it's going to close that and wait for the Sager to finish, which is right now. So great. So how can we check that environment variable uh, a bit more intuitively? So on Windows, you can just search for environment variables and click on this one. And it will open a set of two windows. First is for the user uh, variables and second one is for Windows for the whole system. So I don't really currently care which one is where, but it's uh, uh, great to observe that the ARM embedded 2 chain has put its binary directory into the user variables. As for other executables like uh, Git and CMake has put their uh, bin directories into the system variables. Now to add another one, we can see that the MinGW is nowhere to be seen. So we have to add it to the environment path as well. So just click new. Browse, uh, PC, C, and by default, I let it install into here. So just click on the bin and this should make it available. And also I said before that JLink doesn't put its environmental path into here in the install time. So I'm just going to paste in the uh, installation directory. So I just click OK, OK, and OK. So let's test it. Let's uh, open the git bash, which is a Unix-like interface. It has a few Unix commands, so it's going to be easier for me at least to use. So let's just go into here and check out if everything works. Git is installed. CMake is installed. Uh, make, well, it says it doesn't find it, but I think it's called mingw32-make. And no worries, it's installed and the compiler. As we can see, the tab complete work. So we have also the 10.3 version installed. Great, so we have all the tools. Now let's uh, execute that example project. So I'm just gonna go into the documents. Let's full screen this application and let's call git clone. and clone the repository, enter the repository. And then you have two things to take care of, which are not take care of in my repository as of now. If we go into the example folder and we see the GCC ARM non ABC make and the make file. And if we go back to the GitHub repository, you can see that these two files are simulinks, the Unix style simulink. So they're just links to the actual file. That's because the make file and the toolchain file don't really change for any different project particularly. So in this case, I just decided to make it a link, but links on Unix don't work on Windows. So that's why for the sake of it, let's just remove those 
and uh, replace them with the same copy from the root folder. So just to verify, if we open this on Linux, this would display the actual contents of the file. But on Windows, you can see it just points to the previous file. So let's just remove make file and the GCC toolchain file, which are both dead links. And let's just copy the original make file over here and the original GCC toolchain. Great. Next and the last thing we have to take care of is the make files. By default, I didn't give the choice of how, which type of uh, output build uh, tool it actually outputs from the CMake because CMake can output any number of different build tools with the G option. And by default, it outputs the Unix make files. But for our purpose, we have to point it to use the mingw make files because we're on Windows. So for that, just type in mingw, it capitals and make files. Exit and let's save it. And now let's test it. So let's unzoom a little bit and call make cmake. So this is configure cmake. And now this is uh, uh, my Linux way. Make doesn't work because it's called mingw dash make. So let's create a, a temporary alias for make because we're in a Unix like shell we can do that. So mingw 32 dash make. No, not cmake, make. Now we can run make cmake as we would on my Linux videos. So now it's checking the compiler and it seems to find everything. So here's the path that it got from the compiler. Great. Let's, let's start compiling. Let's give it four cores. And as you can see, it's successfully compiling the project and linking it. So if we see the build directory, we can see the bin, elf and the hex. Now let's flash them. So I said that for me, I installed the jlink utility. The ST link programmer is the simplest, but let's call the jlink. So this is the one that I want. Yeah, it's for development purposes only. Okay. We're going to specify the core. So I have the STN32 F4 discovery board, which has the STN32 F407 VG processor on it. I'm going to select this one and we're going to click OK. And then we're going to select the bin file. So it's uh, because we opened the programmer from the terminal, it's already in the correct directory. We just go to bin and select the bin and just click program the device. And it doesn't find the device that because I didn't pass it to my virtual machine. So in the uh, libvirt on QMU, we just go to redirect USB device and send it to it. And now Windows should probably make a noise saying that it found the device. So let's try it right now. And it found it. Yes, it's, uh, it's the basic one. So that's why you have to accept the terms. And it finished installing. And I can see the LED blinking on the board right now. So. This is really it. So this is minimal. Uh, obviously, I didn't present any way of developing in some kind of IDE. But other than that, this is all the tools that you can get uh, running on Windows to compile my example project that I have on uh, GitHub. I'm going to put all the links to these executables and installations into the description. Uh, and hopefully, uh, this will allow you, uh, the Windows users, to follow my past and my future videos as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.